I firmly believe in my heart that the day that the black man takes an uncompromising step and realizes that he's within his rights when his own freedom is being jeopardized to use any means necessary to bring about his freedom or put a halt to that injustice, I don't think he'll be by himself. On December 4th, 2018, the Oxford Union invited Chairman Amalia Shetela to participate in the Oxford debates. The invitation read, Dear Mr. Yeshitella, I hope this email finds you well. I am writing to extend an invitation to speak at the Oxford Union in our forthcoming term. Founded in 1823, the Oxford Union is the largest society at the University of Oxford and one of the most famous student societies in the world. In the past, we have hosted visits ranging from U.S. Presidents Reagan, Nixon, and Carter to Morgan Freeman and Malcolm X. Moreover, we are famous for debating the most important and pressing issues of the day, from a liberty and security debate last year to the king and country debate of 1933. We would love for you to be a part of this tradition and speak on the motion, this house believes the left must reclaim populism. With a lifetime of fighting for freedom for African people, you are a globally inspiring champion for racial equality and socialism. Your vision has been crucial to shaping the theory of African internationalism and indeed the socialist movement worldwide. This timely debate would be hugely benefited by your irreplaceable perspective and input. The topic would later change to, should this house embrace an ever closer African Union? And the debate was themed, the Africa debate. It's because of young Africans right here in Ferguson who stood up and fought. Chairman Amalia Shetela accepted the invitation, bringing the theory of African internationalism to the world stage. I cannot stand before this August body without prefacing my statement in defense of closer unity of Africa, without stating first my unconditional solidarity with President Maduro and the government and people of Venezuela who are currently under attack, savage attack, by the declining world hegemon of the United States. I think it's absolutely necessary to say that coming from that country, and especially looking at the fact that the United States travels the world training, uh, presenting itself uh, as the guardian of democracy and the rights of the peoples around the world, where the reality is that Africans who are colonized in the United States represent at least half of the largest prison population in the world. There are more Africans in prison in the United States than there are people in Djibouti or in Equatorial Guinea. And so we find it very difficult also recognizing that by their own estimates, it would take 228 years for the income of Africans colonized in the United States to equal that of the colonial white population. So it is absolutely necessary for me to stand here to, today before you expressing total opposition to the United States government terroristic actions against the people of Venezuela with an attempt to starve the people into opposition to their government. Mr. President, Brothers and sisters, comrades, and also, it is also necessary for us to say that this question of a closer union with Africa, or between Africans, or within Africa, is not a purely academic question, despite the fact that this debate has occurred within the pinnacle of bourgeois academia. <laughs> the, that there is a natural historical 
inclination for Africa and African people to be united, which is one of the reasons I am here today. The truth of the matter is that this discussion about the unity of Africa, union of Africans, started much earlier than any encouragement as it might be characterized of China or the Trump administration into Africa. The reality is that Africa came under assault some 600 years ago when Portugal first came and captured African people and initiated the process that would begin capitalism and would establish and consolidate the identity of Europeans in the world. It is a reality that capitalism rests upon a foundation of African slavery, Africans were first capital. And in order for this to occur and to last, it was absolutely necessary to keep African people divided so that we could not resist this horrible incursion on Africa that continues up to now. I think it's important to be able to say that. I think that we have to say that we've seen example after example by African people to unite. We've seen what used to be warring tribes in this geographical terrain that we occupy at this moment able to achieve a sense of sameness that people refer to as nations, founded on a common economy that came from slavery and colonialism. This is the basis of the unity that we see. If there is a problem with the European Union today, it is because the foundation, the economic foundation of capital, of imperialism, is being stressed by the struggles of the oppressed peoples of the world to take back their resources from this parasite that bleeds Africa, that bleeds the world, that bleeds Afghanistan, that bleeds the people of Yemen who are dying by the thousands as we have this discussion. This is the basis of a Brexit. It can't stand together anymore because the host is rejecting the parasite. And it's creating crisis throughout Europe and throughout the imperialist world. I think it's necessary, brothers and sisters, to say that there has been a natural trajectory by African people for closer union. We know that we're talking about having this discussion in part because in 1884-85, Europeans sat at a table in Berlin, Germany, and I was singing African there and carve up Africa into the territories that we now sometimes call countries and illogically refer to as nations. Africans didn't do that. It was Europe that did that. It was Europe and imperialism that required Africa to be, Africa to be divided so that the resources of Africa, both human and material, could come and pave the streets and London and go the buildings in Amsterdam and bring clean water to New York while the streets in Sierra Leone are not paved and the people in Sierra Leone do not have clean water and there's no, there's no national electric grid there. It is necessary to keep Africa divided by European imperialism and by all the imperialism in order to continue to suck the resources from Africa so that cell phones could exist here, so that Steve Jobs and others could achieve some great notoriety from the coal tan that comes from Congo, where a little coal killed at least 12 to 15 million Africans in order to conquer and keep Africa in the condition it's in today. We talk about a united Africa, Africa, an African Union, because of what European imperialism has done to Africa to keep us divided. We know it's true. We saw a hundred years or so ago, Marcus Garvey organized the Universal Negro Improvement Association in African Communities League that stretched across the globe more than 11 million African people everywhere were connected to this. Africa for Africans, at home and abroad. That was a cry. Not that was the Nigerians that didn't even exist until the British created in 1915. And for a shock, the mistress who would become the wife 
Socialist International uh, does exist, and we are building in what they call South Africa, and building in Kenya, and building in Ghana, and building, you know, with Africans who are located in France and the United Kingdom and Germany and you know Belgium and throughout the United States and you know in the Caribbean. That is the actual occurrence of the revolutionary union that we're talking about, not this farce that came together after 1963, which was an attempt to block any kind of union real union with Africa. We're talking about the union that Kwame Nkrumah talked about, but it can only occur through revolution. That means that the existing order has to be overthrown, destroyed, and the workers and the poor peasants have to come to power with their own revolutionary party. So we did what we could in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Okay. <laughs> Actually, the debate was very inspiring in terms of uh, history, in terms of culture, but also in terms of the challenges that are uh, spreading the people of Africa across the Africa. I really enjoyed the quality of the debate and both the argument of, uh, of the opposition and those who won an ever closer union. It was it was beautiful. I think it was a wonderful presentation. I think that the what I especially enjoyed was the emphasis on the necessity of socialism as well as African unity. So it cannot just be, you know, a capitalist united system, you know, it has to be socialist. I was, I was awestruck by the chairman's presentation, uh, his argument and his address today. It was an address that we commonly see at the uni. It wasn't one that focused on the semantics or the nitty gritties of the argument right. or, the, or the motion. It was one that called, you know, the outright for a revolution and, and the argument behind that followed that it was a revolutionary logic which I'm glad he brought to the union. Yeah. It's changed my views. <laughs> Uhuru, comrades, Uhuru brothers and sisters, I'm Anwesi Kinshasa, the African Socialist International Secretary General. 
I would just like to talk quickly about the uh, implication, the significance of uh, historical German or Malish theater presentation at Oxford Union. So German or Malish theater presentation at the Oxford Union on the 24th of January was the voice of the African working class in alliance with the poor peasants and the all honest forces opposed to world's parasitic capitalist system against the uh, white bourgeoisie and its ally of the African petty bourgeoisie. It was a war of ideas. That's what we saw. The, uh, it was the recognition by the white ruling class that uh, they have to contend with uh, the rising philosophy of African internationalism. It was also the evidence uh, that we all saw of the impossibility uh, of the uh, white bourgeoisie and the African petty bourgeoisie to win the philosophical battles against the African working class when it's equipped with the ideology of our African internationalism. This is a new trend that uh, we saw emerging uh, in South Floyd University a few years ago where all the writings, all the books, uh, all the work basically uh, by German Omari Ishtela was assembled, collected and stored in the South Florida University. Uh, and also uh, this is a new round of anti-colonial struggles, unlike uh, in the 50s, the 60s and 70s uh, when the struggle uh, was led uh, by the African petty bourgeoisie. When it used to be uh, dynamic and progressive, but today the struggle uh, for national liberation is led by the African working class under the leadership of the African Socialist International. And that's really uh, uh, important for people to, to understand uh, what we saw uh, on that day at the Oxford Union. The African people would see now is a reactionary and social force. Uh, so, it also was the struggle uh, between the past uh, and the future. And the future is basically a socialist revolution for a total liberation of Africa. It was is a, an all African socialist governments, a unification basically of the African nation, all black people everywhere from around uh, the planet uh, being part of one nation and Africa being the home. Uh, that's what we saw uh, on that day. Uh, the leadership of the black working class for that historical uh, mission. It was also the resurrection, the vindication uh, of the unification project of uh, the great Marcus Garvey and uh, the late Kwame Nkrumah as the only answer to the daily national humiliation of black people everywhere by white imperialists and the new imperialists. What was also brilliant on that day the chairman started his presentation by offering an unconditional um, solidarity to Maduro's of Venezuela. And uh, living here in the UK, you know, the, 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 the government of the UK has refused to give back uh, the gold uh, of Venezuela people uh, that uh, was given to uh, UK uh, to look after. Uh, now that asking uh, for that good to go back, they refused to do so. So it was important of that solidarity. Um, it also was the right place for anyone who was there to begin basically to put an end to the media slander on Africa, uh, giving the correct causes on, of our global suffering and also on the causes of the crisis even here in the UK. Uh, to understand the Brexit uh, you know, causes, you know, if you follow the presidential chairman, you, you will understand it. Uh, it was also a call to the African students who, who, who were in the room to commit class suicide. To commit class suicide, to join the future uh, in joining the African Revolution, which means join the African Socialist International, which is the union of all African peoples, uh, uh, socialist parties uh, across uh, the planet. It was also a call to white youth, to white students who voted uh, along African Sudan, I guess, for a closer unity uh, to win uh, the vote against uh, loose unity. Uh, basically, it was a call to them to rejoin humanity uh, by committing a national uh, suicide uh, and, uh, and being solidarity with uh, black power. So we are winning, join the future.
join the African Revolution, join African Socialist International. That's a great start. Yeah. Well, I just think that uh, this is one of the most important statements that you will find uh, Marx yeah. would have made. The philosophers yeah. have only interpreted the world in yeah. various ways. The point, however, yeah. is to change it. And the problem is that most of the communists and Marxists that we've known uh, have only interpreted the world and <clears throat> have never <clears throat> engaged in changing it. And that's exactly what we're about, changing mm -hmm. the world. And so if you have an interpretation of the world that yeah. doesn't contribute to changing it, it's yeah. worthless. Worthy. And no matter how brilliant it may seem, yeah. it's worthless. Yeah. That's what we say that uh, review of yeah. philosophy, you know, if it can't be something that uh, is actually uh, uh, made material in the real world, it's worthless. Yeah. That's just what distinguishes African internationalism, yeah. African People's Socialist Party. Mm -hmm. Order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unity of theory and practice. Unity of theory Knowing and practice. Hey you, H U R U, free. You, H U R U, free. Check out Marcus Garvey, check out John Henry Clark, check out Steve Biko. Don't be left in the dark. Hey you, H U R U, free. You, H U R U, free. Check out O'Malley, yes, you tell I rap Brown, Malcolm X, Robin Sobukwe, Che Guevara, and Penny Hess. Africa, my beginning and my ending. About to show you what we are before European expansion. Look, man, I'm RBG, I don't front. I pick up a brick if I'm gonna yell that any puppet president run. White power and black face, got us filling up prisons. Call it SA or Azania, but a black government this isn't. To stick a black man, the pigs need no reason. Black sellout sold their souls to neo colonialism. Hence, we gotta try, hence we gotta fight.